Welcome, everyone, back to a conversation I'm having with a, an, an old friend, a uh, colleague. Um, his name is Tom Buford. And uh, Tom, you know, I, I, well, let me just say what I know about our, our work together, and then you can say more about you. Mm -hmm. So um, Tom and I met probably back in, I'm going to guess, 2010 or 2011. Yeah. Uh, and we met through the mutual introduction from joint venture partners, probably, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yep. And um, so the back then we did a couple of JVs together, joint ventures where, um, you know, Tom had a wonderful course that I promoted to my list. It was a, um, I think it might, I might have promoted two of yours. I think that one was um, for charge what you're worth, I believe. Charge what you deserve, yeah. Charge, charge what you deserve. And then yep. second one was um, uh, create a course in a, in a week. Yeah. Info product weekend. Info product yeah, weekend. weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I promoted those, and then Tom also promoted my my things to his list. Yep. And we've both been um, financially successful in the internet marketing space, and we have both really seen a lot of different models, um, what's worked and what hasn't worked. We've also seen a lot of the um, manipulation in our industry. Uh, and the, the practices that uh, work in terms of getting short-term uh, buyers, sales, um, but we haven't felt great about it. And that's why we want to have this conversation to bring light to some of those practices so that everyone who's watching this can hope, maybe you'll recognize some of this having been done to you, uh, but hopefully you will be more aware of what's being done so that you don't get... Um, you don't get the wool pulled over your eyes for, mm -hmm. for future launches and things like that. And, and so that you realize that there is a better way. Um, I mean, hopefully we can expose what's, what is clearly not what our conscience is approving of mm -hmm. and what is, not, um, what, uh, what, doesn't, what is not the kind of world that we want to create. And then we can talk about maybe alternative, alternative ways but even just, I think even just exposing the practices that we don't like will keep us more aware so that we can work on practices that we, we do believe in and try things in a way that really is more aligned to, uh, to our higher ethics and, and to how we want to treat people and how we want to be treated as well. So, yeah, Tom, welcome and thanks for doing this. Yeah, I appreciate it. And this, this really came, I think, pretty organically with, from you and I. You were the first to really step out and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to stop doing some of these things we've been doing over the years. And, and there was never any intent to uh, manipulate or coerce people or anything like that. It just, I think we wound up doing things that just seemed normal, right? This is just what you do in marketing. Yeah. And then you start thinking, wow, you know, we... I think when you're on the other end of it too, like buying and getting hooked on some of these big uh, launches and all this, and then you, you really take a good look and you and I have the opportunity to be, to be behind the scenes mm -hmm. of launches and really see what happens. And um, many times everything is uh, you know above board and being done well, but in many, many times, uh, I think things are being done to manipulate just to get more sales. Right. And in the long term, it doesn't, it doesn't serve. It certainly doesn't uh, create a market. I think that we all want to live in. So that that's I think the yeah. key. So yeah. so you really stepped out. I think I mean definitely well before me, and you had the courage to do that and to just really change your business model. And so I was inspired by that and and kept kind of hounding you a little bit, like George, how's this going? You know, what's yeah. me? I was like, this is scary, right? And yeah. yeah. Here we are, a couple of years, and, and you're still here, right? You're you yeah. surrounded. it. So yeah, and, uh, I've certainly made some some choices that uh, that you know have affected my income even, but I feel. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. You know, it, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's good. And, Long -term, and, it's definitely for the better. And what's, I think, required, what's been required of us as a result is to be more creative yes. about launching and selling in a way that feels good to us, yeah. um, that we really believe in. And that um, I, I think as a result of the, the yeah, the radical changes, definitely, they've definitely decreased my income by a lot. Yeah. In the first couple of years that I made the changes, um, but what I what I have noticed over time is that it's created um, far better relationships uh, with people that I work with that mm -hmm. I'm more proud of that 
uh, there's more referrals as a result. And yeah. so that's really good. But maybe just to co- go back to some of the practices that we saw that we, um, we didn't agree with, that we felt were unnecessary, but people were using it for short-term sales. Mm-hmm. Give an example of, of what, 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 what you saw. Well, uh, the main thing, and this is how I built my list, was just through JVs. So the joint ventures, and promotional partnerships, which are fine. Uh, mm-hmm. there, there's definitely a place for them. But what happened is I and you too, I, th- I think, you know, we were both kind of in this uh, circle of people that were doing joint ventures. And I think what hit me was when, um, when somebody was supposed to be promoting me mm-hmm. in, let's just say, January. This is a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And... I was told, and this is on the calendar for quite a while, and then I was told in January, not by this person, whom I do know personally, but he, he never opted to reach out to me personally. Wow. Uh, his JV manager said, well, Tom, um, we're going to have to take you on the, off of the calendar unless you're in our top 10. Right. Because we're only, we have to really limit, we're going to promote only to our top 10. Right. So from a business perspective, people would say, well, yeah, that's fair, right? But if you, you have to think about it, what that means is that if you're in their top 10, it doesn't matter what you're selling, they're going to promote it. And they're going to promote it all out. And so if you're on that person's list, you're getting emails from this person saying, I've got this great colleague and friend who they probably don't know. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but because they were a top affiliate partner. Right. That's why they're so a great colleague and friend. That's their great colleague and friend. Yeah. Right. So it, it just really... I guess for me, it was is uh, I had to start reflecting on is this what I'm part of? And, and by the way, I should say that the what you just said is is the normal way that internet marketers do business. Yes. So everybody who is watching this, who is listening to this, you are on probably if you're subscribed to different email newsletters and different yeah. people's promotions and their content or whatever, you're very likely on these lists where you are just getting promoted the stuff that uh, of, of their colleague or friend who just yeah. really promoted them as well. Yeah. And it's, just, it's all based not on, yeah, Tom really, you know, you know, Joe really believes in George's product. That's why he's sharing it. No, yes. no, Joe is promoting George's stuff because George uh, was successful enough in promoting yes. Joe's stuff. It doesn't matter right. whether Joe's audience needs what George has or George's audience needs what Joe has. It's yeah. just, we're really good at copywriting and that's the key. <laughs> like yep. if, you're really, if you're really good at copywriting, meaning writing things, writing um, emails and web pages that make audiences salivate because it's yep. so good, like so juicy, right? Yep. It makes us salivate that. Oh my God, it's so good. I can, I can have an easy life just by buying this product. That's right. The silver bullet. <laughs> the silver bullet. Like if I, if I buy this product, it'll solve these problems. Yeah. It's guaranteed. If, I does, if it doesn't work, I just get my money back. How great this is. There's nothing, there's nothing to lose. And look at all these wonderful testimonials. Look at all these people, right? Yep. We can talk about who those testimonials really are. But those testimonials, like they're, they're getting amazing results. So I must get pretty good results. I mean, gosh, if these people are, are making, you know, buy my thing and you'll make – Ten thousand dollars a month, and gosh, even if I made seven or eight thousand a month just by buying this system or this yep. solution, it's great. And so, co- great copywriting can sell anything. And I think that's also one of the problems that I have is that um, that's it. You know, it's like with great copywriting, it doesn't. Great copywriting doesn't prove whether a product or service is good. It just proves whether that person is good at copywriting. Correct. You know. And, and copywriting, good copywriters are um, very intentionally writing based on uh, they, they want to tap into emotion. And that's like the number one yeah. thing. If, if I think if a copywriter said, hey, I have to keep one tool and that's it, it would be, okay, how can I, um, how can I really tap into people's emotions? Because that's what people, people will buy based on emotion. Right? Okay. They justify based on logic, but they yes. buy based on emotion. Yes. And copy, they do that. So they really, oh, look how your life could be. And so it actually makes people, I think, feel more, feel worse about their certain, their, their current situation than they should or than they would prior to reading that or hearing about this, right? Because, you know, this is an issue in the, in the United States, well, everywhere in the world, but um, as we're getting um, a larger gap between, I don't want to talk politics here, right? But, but you know, it's no, it's no mystery. Our middle class is disappearing. Yeah. I mean, Canada, I think now is, is considered it has the strongest middle class mm. in the world. I'm not going to get into, again, politics or yeah, no, it's, anything it's, like yeah, this, right? Reality, but, yeah. but the U.S., uh, 
middle class is shrinking, what happened, there's also depression rates that are going up significantly. And, and part of this, people, I've seen some research say that it's this comparison between where people are to where they think they could be. Oh. And so that comparison really, it's like this juxtaposition that makes us really look and think poorly of ourselves, even though if we didn't, weren't aware of this, and now we're aware because of media, right? Because everything's on the internet. It's so yeah. easy to get a hold of. And then people put out their, you know, their kind of fake lives on social media too. They don't. Right. No, and what, what you're saying actually is, I think it's really important to, to, to just remember to, to bring to light because I was, um, like every year there's a, there's a world happiness day, I guess that's part of the, the UN and the UN puts out this report, uh, that they've done, you know, studies from many countries about happiness. They have like different metrics for that. And, and yet again, this most recent report, uh, the conclusion was that societies that are more equal economically mm -hmm. are happier. Yeah. And it's, uh, and just like what you're saying is if within a society, um, there is less of people wanting what someone else has. Yeah. Wow. You know, it was like, oh, we all have, you know, the same brand of car, basically. Yeah. People tend to be happier because there tend to be better communities, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, what you're saying is exactly right. It's like what copywriters are doing on the internet is that they, I think what I call is they, they kind of, they stoke the fires of desire. Yes. Right. And they well, say, they say, you're, you're not, you're not uh, complete. Your life is not well lived until you, or your business is not, is, you know, the one thing you must have. Yep. The one mistake you're making yes. you know, in your business is that you're not doing this. And if you buy this, then you finally have, you have, yeah. you have the completion. And, it's, right. and, and so we keep spending our money because we're thinking, I, if I, can, I, can buy, I can buy a feeling of completion. I can buy, yes. We're not consciously thinking this, but we're emotionally feeling it. And that's exactly what you're saying, right? Yeah, it's like that's right. copywriters who are good at getting us to take out our wallet and spend our money is creating that gap and literally yes <laughs> literally this is the typical sales training yep and it is about that too the typical sales training is you get into a conversation where you are doing your best to create the gap in the prospect's mind that this is where they are and this is really where they want to be don't they yeah and isn't that painful of a gap yeah. that you the, the service provider are the solution to get them from you know, point A to point B so that they can be happy, complete, fulfilled, free from fear and poverty yeah. and, and insecurity and all that. Yeah. 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 The conversation is supposed to widen the gap and that's you're right. You're supposed to, you know, shorten the gap. I mean, right. That's the whole, that's the sales process. Yeah. That's these three sessions to sell and all that stuff, right? That's what they're all based on. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, talk to someone, find out where they are, why, where do they want to be? Why aren't they where they want to be? Right, in a way, and you know, then really agitate. That's what they talk about. You know, That's right. Agitate, agitate, problem. right? When that, gosh, <laughs> like, like let's, let's think about this. You know, in terms of the golden rule, do we want someone to agitate us? <laughs> I know. You know, and like if you're happy driving a Honda, right? Uh, say, but, but come on, wouldn't you be happier if you could drive a Mercedes or a Porsche? Wouldn't that? Isn't that what you want? It's like, yeah. oh man, I don't know. You know, now that you think about it, it's like, yeah, well, what would it make you feel like if you had a Porsche? Yeah. Oh, I guess, you know, and so you start thinking of this when you were perfectly happy driving the Honda. Yeah. And, and maybe you do want a Porsche and that's fine if that's what you want, but right. to create this kind of false sense of what people yeah. need. That, that's where I think. The, that's, the, that's the, right. That's exactly right. Um, I, I always like to kind of bring up, you know, to remind us of the fact that we all believe in the golden rule. Yeah. Um, do, treat others like how we want to be treated. And in marketing, we are taught to just throw that out the door. It's like we, we treat people, uh, we, 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 we instill more fear and more greed in them so that yeah. they'll buy from us. Now, here's the thing, though. The, the, those who teach this, they justify it. And I'd love to hear your opinion on this. They justify it, Tom, by saying, but, you're, but the, the, having them buy from you really is good for them. And so... The, the seller of the Porsche would say, Tom, I, yeah, you're, you're happy with your Honda, but I know you'll be happier with a Porsche. Yep. So I don't care what your financial situation is. And that's actually part of what my, my complaint is. Yes. With, with, with marketers is that they don't 
truly care about their prospects, especially they don't care about the prospect's financial situation. They just do the, they, they think that their job as a marketer is just to sell and to make that sale successful. Yes. And it's their prospects. They, they completely put the burden of responsibility mm -hmm. on the prospect to say that, well, buyer beware, the prospect's business is the prospect's job is to do the due diligence, supposedly. Yeah. Do yes. the due diligence, look at their own budget. Yeah. Rational decision. Yeah. But like you've already said, Tom, marketers, what, what, what marketers excel at is bypassing the rational, going to yeah. the emotion. Yeah. But so, okay. So, Tom, you know, I, I think the Porsche is right for you. You need a Porsche. You'll be happier with a Porsche. Mm -hmm. Your friends will respect you more. So I think I'm going to do everything I can to get you to buy my Porsche. Yeah, I mean, if you could show me statistically that people are actually happier buying Porsches, <laughs> which is not true, into this, right? But we know that this stuff's not true. In our industry, I think in the marketing, the problem is that even at the highest end, right? Even the high the people selling the highest end stuff, right. um, the results, frankly, that the clients get, right? If you could tell me, hey, listen, ninety percent of the people that go through my program get the result <laughs> exactly, okay. even 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 sixty percent. <laughs> Even 20%, because it's <laughs> probably five or 10. No, it's true. And I'm probably being generous. Yeah. Even at high end, uh, yeah. you know, people that are investing $30,000, taking seconds out on their, their home. Yeah. I mean, doing things that they just should not be doing. Right. I remember there was uh, someone not long ago, well, actually it's been at least a year. This email came out and I, I guess I was on their list for some reason. I wasn't after this because I promptly uh, unsubscribed. But I knew exactly what the email was because I'd seen someone else do the same headline and it was basically, are you investing in your business or are you taking your business or whatever it was. Yeah. And it was something to the effect of, uh, you know, if you're a coach, you, you've got to be investing in your business just like any other company invests in their business. And that means taking your credit cards and if you have to max out your credit cards, you need to do this. And then guess wow. what this was doing? Then they're selling their, their high-end coaching at the, at the end of this, right? And I'm thinking, you know, I think people have, have, are misconstruing what it takes to actually go and get a business loan for a business. It, it means having credit, it means having a yeah. business plan, it means having, uh, right. actually already having some profits, you have to show some income. Sure. There are things that you have to do to invest into a business. Yeah. Where you're going to find investors that like your idea enough, yeah. that they'll do it based on, you know, this, this early stage. So to say this, this, this is, that's, again, it's so manipulative to tell people and get really guilt them into, well, gee, aren't you investing in your business? And if right. you're a smart business owner, smart business owners uh, invest in their businesses and they take out loans. And if that means a credit card, then do it. And that's the kind of marketing we're talking about that we're faced with. And it's, uh, it's false first off, because I mean, anyone says that has no idea what they're talking about in terms of what it, what it takes to get a business loan. Yeah. So it, this yeah. is a completely false uh, comparison, but, and, and it's infuriating and above. Yes. So. I, and I, 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 sometimes I say that I, I hear this giant sucking sound of money that's going yeah. to all these people who should not be spending money on yeah. these programs and going to the top. Yes. Um, going to the top, the, 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 those six, seven, eight figure coaches who are using this, these kinds of tactics. I think yeah. of like a Ponzi scheme almost, right? Right. Yeah. It's like Ponzi all the money going to the bottom. Where you get all this money and it comes up here and then some of it circulates back around, right? Because, mm -hmm. but at the end, right, there's not enough money to support it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, there's no money being made, actually being made. Yeah. The money being made is coming from everyone below this top person and they're right. spending it, right? That's yeah. not, not saving it. So, so the key, the key that just to complete this particular example, yeah. the key problem is that these high-end programs, most of the coaching programs, mm -hmm. don't have accurate reviews or testimonials. Now, yeah, I want everyone watching this and listening to this to understand that when you see testimonials and social proof on someone's website, they are almost exclusively using the top 1% to 5% of their customers who, for whatever reason, succeeded with their program. And oftentimes... These customers who's like, I bought Sally's program and now I'm making $10,000 a month because of her system. A lot of times, this person who was make, now making 10000 
would have been making that much anyway without Sally's system, or maybe maybe um, she was on the verge of changing something that is now making her successful, and she's now Sally is asking her, "Can you write a testimonial for me to say that now you're making this money or whatever?" Yeah. It's, it's not like Amazon, well, even Amazon can be gamed, right? The reviews there. Well, the reviews now, it's terrible now too. So now, but, but, yeah. but still, like, we're not getting, we're not getting sort of um, unbiased reviews of these expensive programs. No. Yeah, in fact, I was in a mastermind, this is a few years ago, I was in a, a small mastermind with some people I'd met at an event in 2007 in California. And um, one of the guys in the mastermind gave a, uh, he gave a testimonial for the person that, you know, we were at, at this guy's event. Um, it, now, it wasn't this guy's fault, the other guy's fault, because he didn't really, wasn't really privy to how this came about. But we knew because of the mastermind conversations, what happened, he said, oh, I made $46,000. Um, and he did. I mean, he made a lot of money using the strategies that I learned from so and so, this yeah. person. But it was based on it was under the false pretense that he had no list to start like, uh, all that's from scratch. Awesome. But the reality yeah. is that he had a really good sized list right. of, of uh, and high, like high end, like executives, right? He was yeah. an executive uh, coach. Right. Right. And so he started this new thing, this kind of info product, you know, information marketing thing, had a launch, made some really good money. And so it, it seemed like, Oh, from scratch, I just started because he just started this product. Right. But he'd been building this business for a long time. And that right. also is, is a lot, and that, that alludes to what you were saying too, is that some of these people that give the testimonials, they make, they might be making a million dollars right now. And they know this person and you know this launch partner. Right. Yeah. And they say, Hey, I made, you know, thirty thousand last month trying this guy's strategy. But it's a drop in the bucket right. compared uh, to the actual revenue that normal they're month. Yeah. I mean, not even a normal month. I mean, that's just right. like uh, just yeah, they tested something and they've got a huge list and yeah. So maybe that's an extreme example and that's not all that's going on, but it, that's, that is it's definitely part of, of what pretty common, honestly, yeah. Tom, because I, when I was using those kinds of tactics back in 2010, 2011, mm -hmm. I remember having a client who used my social media system and yeah. earned $10,000 and I used that testimonial when I, but when I suspected, I didn't see just because she gave me that testimonial, I was like really excited, but I kind of yeah. suspected that actually her business is such that it wasn't that big of a deal that she made yeah. $10,000. And I didn't like do dig into it because I didn't really want to see, and uh, you know, I wanted sure. to use that testimonial to, to share. And you know, I, of course I look back and I said, well, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm coming out of that and not using those kind of tactics anymore. Yeah. So, so I'd love to switch gears if you're interested and talk about, cause I know a lot of, we've been talking a lot about what the things that we don't want to do. Yes. So now let's talk about, all right, what is a better way or what are we experimenting with? What are we um, seeing that others are doing that, that, that are honorable or that the things that we are doing that uh, we feel good about mm -hmm. uh, that, that are working or have a good potential of working any, any, uh, anything you want to start with there? Um, I'll, I'll say just something I did recently that, sure. um, triggered a really positive response from some people. And, and so this is what's going to turn some people off. I, I made no money directly from this thing. Right. Okay. So, um, I think that we have to be thinking long term. So yeah. I have been, and I've been doing this, right? Doing these webinars where it's get people to sign up. You're going to share, you know, three tips and then you're going to sell your course at the end, right? That's right. it. It's right. Great. It's a great formula. It can work. Um, the problem, like I see a lot of people doing this and they're talking about themselves for 20 minutes and yeah. it's like, share some content, you know? Yeah. So even if I'm doing that, I'm always sharing content that people can take. Like you don't have to buy anything. You can take this. But the mm -hmm. other day, I'm still getting kind of uncomfortable with that too, even though that's so many people doing this now. And yeah, every time I see it, it's another opt-in for a webinar and they're not going to give me any information. Right. They're just going to sell me their course at the yes. end. And, and it's just becoming this scene of, of this, right? So I'm, I'm going back to the negative. Totally. But well, the, the Tom, man, I have to say the reason why, you don't think these free webinars giving you information is because you have really been around the block. I mean, I yeah. just, you know, we haven't done a deep intro of you, but you've been in this internet marketing uh, industry longer than I have. Um, I mean, you were mentioning 2007. I didn't start till 2009. Yeah. 
so you've been longer and, and you've really studied a lot of different systems. So a free webinar isn't impressive to you, but it might be impressive to yeah. a newbie yeah. who's like, oh my God, I didn't know that. You know, Facebook. Yeah, but I still try to, I still try to see if they're at least sharing information because I have no, like, I don't have to learn anything, but as, as long as they're sharing information, but when right. it's kind of these, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're just really, building credibility for themselves. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, it was, it's, it's trying to sell, you can tell uh, they're, they're seeding their pro because now okay. I see all this stuff too. Like, ah, uh, they're yeah. just seeding their program. They're not giving anything anyone can use. Yeah. Now, some of them, there's some and also webinars. They're giving fantastic information. So it's not everybody by, by any means. Right. But what I did the other day, I just did a webinar and I, I said, hey, um, I just sent an email out to my list. I, no one had to opt in. And I just said, I've got some really good information I think you guys are going to love. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely nothing to sell. I just told them. I said, this is, and I said, I have nothing against selling from a webinar. I think mm -hmm. that that's right place at the right time. That's a great opportunity. Yeah. I'm just not doing it in this particular webinar. Right. And so it was just pure content. And I had people throughout just like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is unique. Yeah. And uh, I think I've got her email somewhere. I wish I'd, I should have thought about pulling it up. I got an email from someone who I'd never been in contact with before. And it was just a very heartfelt thank you. Like, uh, wow, you've kind of um, renewed my faith in, in the internet wow. world yes. from this. And I'm sure I've done, you know, or will do some things that she's not so happy with. But, yeah. uh, but that was, it really goes to show that people, they're really wanting this. They're, yeah. They're needing this. They're wanting this. They're um, desiring getting some honest information without having to give their email address or without having to buy something at the end. And of course, again, you know, yeah, you should be thinking of building your list and doing some of these things. I'm not against that mm -hmm. uh, personally, but it's uh, when it's just to kind of tease people to withhold and, and you don't give anything of real value until they buy that. That to me is. is yeah, genuine. totally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know what, I, I, I want to, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I think it's worth emphasizing the point that taking the higher road mm -hmm. is a longer term project. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and see, that's the thing about, well, what, what's sustainable, right? What's sustainable is typically more challenging to do. Yes. And it's more patience. Yes. You know, and the things that are, that work very, very quickly. And we could talk about this, right? So like mm -hmm. things that work very quickly are usually burning a bridge or yes. going against what our conscience is telling us to do. And, um, and here's, why, here's why I believe it works quickly. It's because human beings want to trust. We want to trust each other. Yeah. And we tend to take things at face value. Yeah. I think more and more people are more skeptical of marketers um, but even with the, with, the, with, with the internet is so new. I mean, people are skeptical when they see a billboard. You know, billboards have been around so yeah. long that we don't go, oh my God, the billboard says this. That must, yeah. mean, that must mean it's not right. true. People don't trust ads. They, they, people don't trust ads. Yeah. But people still, unfortunately, trust emails and they trust yes. testimonials and things like that because yeah. it's still too new. And so that's why it's working, working to make sales is because people lie essentially through yeah. copywriting uh, you know, just like the, 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 the different things you've, you've already exposed false pretense, et cetera. They lie. And then our marketers lie. And then we buy it because we think that they must be telling the truth and yeah. that's what makes themselves faster. When we start telling the truth now, you know, then it takes people that the truth is almost always much more nuanced, mm -hmm. less hyped up. And yeah. so, Here's the truth, and the truth is very much more steady and calm and real, like concrete. Yeah. And then you've got the hype, which is, in comparison, much louder, yes. much more exciting. Yes. Right? And so, therefore, people well, hold promises. Hold promises. And so, people tend to buy the hype. Yes. And the truth, the hype, of course, goes away eventually. The truth is still there. And so, for those of us who want to do business from a place of truth and love, I would say, uh, we need to be willing to stay for the long term and to just stay around really to keep telling the truth. Yeah. And you yeah. know what? It's not easy. I'll tell you, it is not easy, but it's worthwhile. And I'm, I've been telling the truth now, I would say for about at least two years. <laughs> I'm yeah. not, not that I was lying before, but I've been, I've been, on, I've been earnestly being as transparent and radical as yeah. I can uh, since 2014. 
And only now, honestly, Tom, am I seeing, you know, three years into it, into my truth telling experiment, am I starting to see the results? People are coming back and says, my God, you know, I mean, I, I get more loyal referrals now than I did ever before, but it took me a while. It took me a lot longer yeah. than, than before. However, we can, for those of you who are able to tell the truth for a while and, and be okay with that, that's, this is really important and really uh, honorable and, 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 and useful path. Now, let's talk about for those who need to um, build up their business relatively quickly. Uh, and I would say that you're, you're really, you know, you're really smart at this and you've helped a lot of people do this kind of thing and build, mm -hmm. build their business more quickly. And I don't know what, which part of it you want to talk about. You can talk about so much, but earlier on you were, um, before we started recording, you were talking about your, uh, sort of something you're coming back to about referral marketing. I don't know if yes. you want to go into that a bit. Yeah. Well, so one thing, and this is one of the areas that I am talking less about, Mm -hmm. And that's um, creating online courses because I've been doing a lot of online course sales and, and, yeah. it, and I've made a lot of money selling courses, right? And it's so cool when you do a webinar and someone promotes you and you make 3000 bucks from making 10 sales of a $300 course. That's not a huge feat if you have started building a list, if you have something that's proprietary that you can package. Yes. The problem is that there's a lot of steps involved to getting there. And right. so most people that are, that are out there that I'm running into, they're coming to me for help creating an online course or an info product. And I'm trying to talk them out of doing that because mm. they need four or five clients right now. That's what they need. And, yeah. and so there's uh, so for me, I think, you know, the, the main thing is, you know, build that base, that full practice first. If you're a coach or you're a consultant, you're a trainer, yeah. uh, which I think most people listening yeah. are, mm -hmm. make sure that's in place before, looking at some of these other strategies, these tactics where it's starting to utilize technology because technology can save you or, or, or sink you. I mean, it, it can really, you can get overwhelmed in the technology, but the one thing that doesn't require technology is building up a business based on referrals, mm -hmm. which having conversations, which gets us back to being human, right. And connecting with people, not hiding behind a computer. Right. And serving people through your private work one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. Like you don't need a lot of technology. You don't even need a website. You could right. have a, a profile on LinkedIn. Yeah. And connect with people who could make potential referral partners and take someone out to coffee. So mm -hmm. what this is, and this is something I'm starting to do more, and, and that's sitting down with people who, might, who I might be able to help too. Because it mm -hmm. has to come from, really, you should be sitting down and saying, hey, listen, I don't know what we can do, but would you like to have a cup of coffee? Maybe we can see how we can help each other with our business or whatever you're in. Yeah. And when it comes, you know, you can just ask them, you know, what is it you need? Is there anything I can do? I can, you know, try to connect to some people that might be able to help you with something. Is there something that you're, you know, you're looking for in your business and just try to be helpful. Yeah. Maybe you don't have anything for them, but you're just having a cup of coffee or it's a phone conversation. It doesn't have to be face to face. Mm. And when it comes to, to be your turn, be open and ask, you know, say, listen, well, I build my business based on referrals and I am looking for, uh, for people who are, so this is you have to have your marketing message down and so we're going back to marketing, but you do have to be pretty clear. Yes. If you're talking to somebody, you have to know what it is that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so one example, one area that I'm moving into is helping construction companies because my dad was a contractor and he struggled with marketing, right? So I'm looking here in the Atlanta area to help contractors, construction companies with their marketing messages yeah. and with strategic planning. So okay. if I'm sitting down talking to somebody, it could be a vendor that serves the construction industry. Mm -hmm. And I could say, well, listen, I'm starting to build a network of contractors. I'm happy to put you to, uh, in touch with some of these people, or maybe we can do a, a workshop. Yeah. Where we invite some people in and I talk about marketing and you talk about your, your service that you yeah. have. Yeah. And so start thinking creatively about doing this. And you, if you do this on a regular basis, you get, you can start building a, a good referral base. And then of course, anytime you talk to a client, when you're done with the conversation, you should be asking them, you know, what was most valuable about our conversation today? Mm. And if you hear something really big, like they had a really insightful uh, session with you, then you don't- know, Now you're talking about client sessions, right? About a client, yeah, so this is going back, so not, uh, I switched gears pretty quick there. Okay, so, so, so for referral partners, now we're talking about after a client session, and this is yes. great, because I, I, I've been talking about this in my videos as well, but I want to hear it from, from your perspective. Yeah. So after a client session, 
So you and I had a client session, George, and, and, and we're done. And I say, George, so what was most valuable today? And I think it's good to ask that at the end of every call as often as you can think about it anyways, just so that they reflect. Yes. And I think, oh, you know what? What I got was this. You don't leave with nothing. Mm. Just a bunch of chit chat or a bunch of to do. It's like that one thing. Okay, well, that also gives a little more purpose when you leave, but it gives you some insight on what you're doing well. Excellent. So if there's a big insight, so you, you probably wouldn't do this like your first couple calls with somebody. You want to work with someone for a little while, start getting some progress. But if they have a really big insight like that, wow, that was really significant, you could ask them uh, at that point, well, listen, if this is something that you really value, uh, and again, you know, I build my business on referrals, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you know of anybody else, yeah. um, could we have, could I take you out for a cup of coffee? Mm -hmm. it's, it's on me. There's no, you know, mm -hmm. no coaching agenda or anything here. And nine out of 10 times, you'll get someone that'll, they'll say yes. Or could we have a phone conversation about this yeah. uh, next week? Right. Real quick, I'd like to see. And you can ask them if they know people. You know, I, I think some industries are really easy to, to find. And some industries are really, really difficult. So if you work with um, women who have gone through a divorce, I mean, yes, there are groups out there, but that's a pretty tough group yeah. of women to find. Right. But women who have gone through divorce might be supporting other women who have gone through Yeah, divorce. almost you know, certainly. Have a, an in-law or somebody else or sure. a co-worker. Yes, so if you let them know, hey, I am really looking for more clients. If you don't tell them, they're never going to think of it. Yeah. So you've got to be make sure that you remind them. And you, again, you don't do this every time you have a conversation. Sure. But if you have that kind of aha, or if you've ended um, your work with somebody, and it's you know you've had a great time working with them, but you've it's come to a completion, uh, you could say, well, listen, I'm obviously I'm going to have a, a coaching spot to fill. Do you know? Could I take 15 minutes of your time, and can we talk about? maybe some people that you could uh, introduce me to. Because you're not asking for referrals either, you're just asking for introductions because there's yes. a lot to do for someone to say, you know, there's not really any pressure in saying, right. oh yeah, I can introduce you to a couple of people. And you just want to ask them some questions, be a coach and coach them, yes. like who would be a great fit. And, yeah. you know, if they kind of stumble a little bit, you can get, you know, get very specific. Mm. And uh, it's a little, takes a little practice, but it can be very effective. And it doesn't have to be pushy or, or off-putting at all. What I like about what you're, the way that you're doing it is that, because typically I would just send an email, right? Okay, and, yeah. you know, and an email is fine. Yeah, and that's fine. But it's better than what, nothing. What, what you're doing is you're, you're creating a 15 minute focused time with your client or yes. previous client where it is about the referral process. Yes. Or the introduction process, the introduction process. and yeah. so that they're they're really taking fifteen minutes to think. Well, here, mm. oh yes, that's right, Bob or Sue. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I could refer you that that Sue's going through the exact same thing that I'm going that's through. Right. Yeah, and so because sometimes your clients want to refer you, but they don't know how to. And that's right. Yeah, and so it's like during that conversation, you could say, so, so Tom, you mentioned Sue is going through the same thing you're going through. So how, you know. Um, what, how, how might you, how might you recommend me to her or do you, do you want yeah. to talk through a little bit about what's the right way of introducing me to her? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you want to ask them, well, why did, why did Sue come up? What, what makes you think that Sue's a good fit? Right. And, and so that might even bring up somebody else. They could say, well, for uh, Sue's doing this, but you know, I'm also working with, so it's having the conversation yeah. is a great way of doing it. Yeah. And being a coach and just asking them, like asking open-ended questions, not yes, no, like ask open-ended questions, uh, you know, like. Why do you think Sue's a good fit? Well, because right. Sue does A, B, and C. Oh, wow. You mean she belongs to this group? Yeah. I wonder if they're looking for a speaker. Yeah. Do you know anyone there that might be able to bring in a speaker? Because I'd love to go in and speak. So it can also yeah. other, other things. That can, and that, that won't happen from an email. Uh, right. But email is great. But if you can get them on the phone or, or especially face-to-face, yeah. -face, depending on the nature of your business, that can work well. I'm liking this because the email can be a follow-up tool. Yeah, uh, yes. you, you could even prepare them for the call too, but it could certainly be a follow-up yeah. tool. Um, some people are going to be uncomfortable, frankly. Yeah, with, right, with this. Right. Um, and so maybe if email is, is the best thing that you can do right now, that, that's fine. It's yeah. better than doing absolutely nothing. So um, let's talk about the reality of implementing something like this. And I, we were mentioning some, this before our recording started as well. It's like some people think, you know, my service is so good. Or they think, well, marketing should be easy, so I'm just going to post a Facebook posting yeah. uh, asking my, my network for referrals. And yeah. that's what I did. I did that last, I did that three months ago, and you know, I got a few clients maybe, or maybe I did. Yeah. 
and that's it. You know, <laughs> that's all they do. Or that's, that's yeah. what they do. Or I'm going to post on LinkedIn or I'm going to send an email to 15 people. And then that's what I did last time. And I didn't get any clients or I got a few clients. And now, now what? Yeah. What is the reality of doing referral marketing effectively? How much do we need to be doing? What's your opinion? Well, it, it depends on where someone is in their business. So if somebody has no clients, there's right. no money coming in. Yeah. Um, if they can do it, they should be spending th then 40 to 60 hours a week should be spent marketing period. Mm. You like it or not. I mean, that, that's, yeah. yeah. Uh, and see, this is the thing. These non magic bullets. Yes. They, they sound terrible. Yeah. It's actual work. It's like, you know, listen, the reality is that you've got to work and anyone that's ever hit any real success. And we yeah. know, you know it's like some of these guys you see, it seems like they're, you know, these overnight success, what's I, the expression like the overnight success took 10 years to get there. That's right. But it's, yeah there's no such thing as an overnight success. And, and if they are, there's something shady. Yes, uh, man, Tom, I just have to say you and I have a combined, obviously uh, 15 plus year experience. Long. Yes. In marketing and business. Just in this. Yeah. yeah. And right. And, and yeah. you and I can both say, you know, just look, look, look everyone right in, right in the eyes and say, yeah. There is no overnight success. And anyone yeah. who is promoting that is either not telling you they're, three, five, 10, 20 year backstory right. or, you know, or they're, they're using hyped up means of getting the overnight success that yeah. will crash and burn, will eat away at their conscience for the next 10 years right. yeah. <laughs> or, or burn bridges, you know, might kill their business. There, there's real right. quick, there's a company here in Georgia. It used to be, well, they're all over the country. They were Bill, Bill Hurd, uh, Chevrolet. So I used to do automotive paint repair. Okay. It was my first wow. business I owned from 1999 to 2005. Wow. You know uh, so I did on-site paint repair at dealerships, car dealers. Hmm. I had a really good business here, and I, but I, was, I had started having some health concerns related to the job. So I got out. And I knew some of these guys at Bill Hurd, these sales guys, and they, they were selling junk. They, they had cars that they were uh, lying about damages and, and all sorts of things. They were somehow, they're like manipulating Carfax, and they were doing some really shady stuff. And some of these sales guys, they were really brazen. Like they would admit to some of the vendors and some of us, and I'm doing work on some of these cars. So I'm seeing stuff. And I'm like, this is not what you guys are advertising, you know? Wow. And um, eventually it caught up to him. There was something else that Bill heard. I, mean, I think it wound up being a tax issue, but this guy had dealerships. Uh, he had a race car team. Uh, I mean, he was no longer involved uh, in his, you know, personally in his in the car business, but incredibly wealthy it folded every single dealership they had wow but i think it's it's just that one thing it's just if they're doing this they're doing other things too right yeah. how you do one thing is how you do everything so yeah it's um just some shady stuff going on and and it's it's pretty rampant in the car business any anyway it's harder to get away with now but right um i, I went to go do work on a car one time and i saw it they, they were doing this when they, they were selling cars on ebay back then right wow. and so i go out and it's a, it's a black uh, Lincoln. And I, I went on to eBay and I actually, I saw this car. I'm like, oh, wow, look at this car. And uh, I'm like, wait a minute, isn't this car I'm supposed to go in and do work on? Oh. And it looked perfect. And I go in and it's just in terrible shape. The bumpers are in, in awful shape. And I asked the, the eBay sales guy, I said, what's up with the, the picture? He's like, oh, I just Photoshopped them because I know you're going to do a good job. Oh, man. So before the work was done, he Photoshopped all the work. Wow. That, that would be impossible. I mean, I'm working outside. It's like there's... You know, yeah, yeah, that's the kind of stuff. So you just have to, and it, it, it's amazing. But, but so these kind of, eventually, this stuff catches up to you. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like Bill heard, they're out of business, right? They yeah. they employed thousands of people around wow. the country. Wow, gone. You know, I mean, they yeah. they find work somewhere else, I guess. But yeah, yeah, no, it's you, well, stuff. you just can't. Yeah, and and I mean, looking at my own business, right? Um, the kind of stuff I was doing. Again, I was. I was probably much better than most of my peers uh, or at least less. I, I wasn't able, I wasn't willing to do some of the stuff my peers were doing, but I still were, was, I, I was still doing things that were giving me more overnight success type of things. And I couldn't like my conscience would not allow it anymore. So I feel like one way or another, um, whether it's people finding out or you coming to terms with your own actions, yeah you you won't be able to do it anymore and yeah. you'll have you'll you'll end up you know kind of paying for it uh for for years to come or right. you know is you have to rebuild and so it's like why not just build from the beginning with 
with truth telling with, yes. well, like we've been talking about relationships, because I think that that's the, that's the cost that I think a lot of people aren't willing to pay is to mm-hmm. build relationships, uh, right. To build relationships, to have those referral conversations. They yes. think that, Oh, I hired George. I hired Tom. They're, they're marketing whizzes. They can just make my messaging perfect and yeah. we'll put it online and never have to talk to somebody. Else. That's right. Yeah. It doesn't happen that way. Yeah. So yeah. It'd be great. Yeah. I mean, you can hire people to help out, but you still have to, I think get your, and especially if you're just starting out, Right. And, and also always spend time for marketing. This is the thing too. I learned this from a guy uh, that I've done some training with and, and very straight up guy, uh, Andrew Knightley from Florida. He does executive coach training. And he said his, his definition of a full practice is three days a week mm. he said because one day should be creating content and the other should be marketing. Uh-huh. So marketing could be yeah, it's like always, he said, you never forget marketing. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, you know, on Friday you're marketing. It could be every morning you're doing marketing and you share yeah. So meaning three days a week of client services. Yes. And then like, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, client services, Monday then would be creating content. Friday would be ref- getting referrals or yes. marketing. Yeah. yeah. So, and when he says content, that's not necessarily a blog post. He really yeah. believes in creating proprietary information, like coming up with your own framework, coming up with yeah. your own system, really working on that proactively. Yeah. So you can then teach other people to do what you do and start really building a, a business that, that yeah. is a, a business, yes. uh, not just your, your personal time, writing books. This guy has, I don't know how many books he's, right. but he said it's one of his superpowers. He can write a book and a good, I mean, he has good stuff. Yeah, that's, he's that's very, awesome. uh, he cuts right to the point. I mean, he knows how to, how to do that. That's And, and I believe that we, we each have a superpower um, yes. when it comes to content creation. Some people are great at videos. Some people yeah. are great at writing or, or can, can soon become good or yep. decent at it because of the background they've had. It's like there's some methodology that we each can pursue and become yeah. good or great at, uh, become our superpower. And that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. It could be that someone likes to talk or likes to be interviewed. So it could, you know, yes. if, if you don't like to write or you don't know how to get right. your ideas out, have a friend or a colleague interview you about that's what right. you're doing and then that, Oh wow, all these things will come out. And then, yes. So there's, there's, yeah, get creative with it. Yeah. Definitely. That's awesome. So, um, well, there's a lot more we can talk about. Um, yes, we haven't of touched on a lot things like business models and things like that. So we'll kind of uh, we'll, we'll we'll touch touch on that in another conversation. But I just thank yeah. you for thank you for taking the time to do this. It's no, thanks. And I definitely think we should revisit this. And I know today was this was kind of a, a uh, let's get all the stuff off of our head because yeah. you and I have been talking like oh this is driving me nuts. Yes, yeah. So it's it's a little vent. This is, I guess this is kind of a, a rant. Um, yes. But I think we can really provide some good strategies for people. Because I don't want people to get discouraged thinking they'll never build their business. You can. It, just do the right thing. And if it feels bad, uh, one, I'll, I'll say this too. Like if someone's a coach or they have some life experience, uh, there's a book I'm reading called uh, The Message of You mm. by Judy Carter. Um, it's a great book. I've actually been through it. I'm reading it again. Oh, but this cool. is a, she, she gives some really good insights on how to take your personal story and get it out there and get paid to be a speaker. So for some, it could be, you know, what if you got paid two, three thousand dollars to do uh, a speech yeah. and you did one of those a month? Yeah. And, you know, it, it takes time. There's work sure. involved. The yes. Process. But yes. that could be something that you added to coaching and right. in speaking. You can give as much as you as you want. You don't have to hold anything back. Right. You know, you don't do a brain dump, but yeah, but there's there's structure here and, and you can give people some really good insight. So that's one thing people could think about, too, is what if you were getting paid to speak? That could be part of your income. And yeah. so you're giving back and you're also getting uh, compensated. So yeah. just think, yeah. try to think creatively about that. A, that's a good recommendation. I'll have to look that book up. So <clears throat> just to close off the recording part of this, um, do you have any, uh, how, how would you like people to contact you or reach out to you or find your, find your stuff? Um, they can go to TomBufordMarketing.com, TomBufordMarketing.com, or email at Tom at ChargeWhatYouDeserve.com. It's my cool. main email. And that's, awesome. uh, that's the easiest way. So just yeah, simple. Right on. Yeah. Right on. Thanks. Well, and how about you? Talking. This has all been like you interviewing me. I mean, I guess. Well, so, I, so, yeah, I'm, I'd I'm like doing... to share this with my folks too. So and get this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. my website, georgecow.com, uh, G E O R G E K A O.com has all my, all my content. Uh, I put, I, I'm, I've been in the rhythm of posting three to five new videos on my Facebook fan page. 
every uh, every week actually, and and then I send it out via my my email newsletter. So check that out if you want. And good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love the videos. Yeah, man. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna stop recording now. Um, I'm looking forward okay. to doing another one with you. Uh, Same here. All right. Thanks, All right. Thanks, George.